What's up guys? Welcome to the 600 LT. And first we're gonna start this video off by doing a little walk around of the car. So we're gonna get out, I'm gonna leave this camera here. I'm gonna get my iPhone out. So welcome to the McLaren 600 LT. Um, yeah, one second. Let me... Now we're out. All right guys. Welcome to the McLaren 600 LT review. I just got out of the car. Oh my goodness. Let me tell you one thing. I'm not gonna complain about any cars, but the bucket seats on this thing are brutal. But 600 LT is a track focused car, so these things will definitely hold you in. But first thing I noticed, bucket seats. Brutal, I'm six feet tall. It's a little hard to get in and out of, but I'm not here to complain about the car. Just kind of noting that. Here we are with the 600 LT. This one here has a full exhaust. Also, I believe has a tune. Um, so Catalyst exhaust, tune, this thing gets rowdy. So it's definitely making more horsepower than that. Rare part about this car, it also has the MSO option. So the MSO fenders in carbon, the roof scoop option, which is cra some crazy option. I think it's like 30 or 40 grand for the just the scoop option. It has full carbon everything, the full carbon front, the little fender slit louvers similar to like a gt3 rs that lets the air out so the car can get suction to the ground so the air doesn't build up in the fender wells that's actually what that's for the roof scoop obviously that i just mentioned full carbon all the way back full carbon engine cover here the exhaust that comes out of the top full carbon rear here the diffuser this thing is insane but also carbon here but this here is not carbon it's it is carbon underneath, but overlaid with this heat treatment because that exhaust gets hot and boy, does it get hot back there. <clears throat> Finished off with the red, this like reddish orange interior with the Senna seats. And man, let me tell you something. These seats hold you in. And my buddy daily drives this thing pretty much. He is like daily driven exotics. He's literally daily driving this thing all the time. And man, props to him because he's put some miles on it. But man, getting in and out of those seats is a little brutal. But here we are, McLaren 600 LT. Let's start it up and go for our first little drive. Taking it easy today. I know how the police are around here. So just taking it easy, chill. And yeah, let's start it up. So welcome to the McLaren 600 LT, take two. Whew, getting in was a little brutal. I should've got that one on camera. All right, so 592 horsepower, 457 or so foot pounds of torque uh, but yeah you can hear that those turbo noises put it in sport mode So the first thing you notice kind of in this car, I notice immediately is uh, the steering. Electron, electronic steering. Um, the radar is going nuts out here. So it has electronic steering. So it's something you gotta get a little used to. Those turbo noises are nuts. electronic steering I feel like you know the electronic steering is very very interesting because the input changes a lot from the analog feel that you're used to from some of these little bit previous generation older cars right not necessarily saying McLaren but just saying older generational cars in general drivers cars so to speak right so my last supercar exotic car that I had was a Porsche right so when I compare some stuff you know you're gonna be like oh why are you comparing it to this why are you comparing it to that well I'm just comparing it just so you get an idea, right? Like the 991.2, it is electronic steering, but they've done a lot better job with how they've tuned this electronic steering. But listen to the turbo noises. Sheesh. This thing gets up to speed fast. My goodness. But that 
turbo lifts you. And what's cool is the, the, the pops, the pops out of the back are crazy. Oh my goodness. Um, another thing is that about this car, so 3.8 liter V8, McLaren is known for its you know racing history and rich racing history and heritage around racing, right? But I think the LT cars, specifically the 600, the 675, the 765, these are all cars that are just the pinnacle of McLaren, in my opinion, from a driving perspective and overall the way they look, the, the way that they're completed from a power standpoint, but also their aerodynamics, how they've really developed that McLaren F1 technology and really honed it in on their street cars, right? So that's one of the things about McLaren that's very... Uh, crazy sometimes it's hard to believe that this car has number plates on it like it's hard to believe that this car you can actually buy and drive this on the street because it's very very interesting to believe that it's actually possible to take engineering this far and that's one of the coolest things i think about mclaren's too is that like engineering aspect they they're designing the way they design from a design standpoint and how they design they kind of push the barriers of design when it comes to street cars. And when you look at the affordability, nah, I don't want to say affordability because obviously we're looking at two, three hundred thousand dollar cars here. This right now in the way it's spec could range anywhere from 250 to 300. But what I'm saying, not affordability wise, but what I'm trying to say is uh, the, the aspect of uh, comparing it to Ventadors and cars that are double, triple the price, this thing definitely has the looks for 300,000. You can also get 720s now for around you know, two, you can get 720s now around for around 220. Here, here. Just want to do a quick pull. Don't want to get pulled over today. Don't want to get pulled over at all. Uh, so, the aspect of this car around that, in terms of drivability, obviously, if you get the different, the aspect around, first of all, what I wanted to say, I lost my train of thought for a second. The aspect around not just drivability but the aspect around the car of the design aspect what you get for the money overall performance but see the other downsides of sometimes McLaren is the dealer network is a lot smaller it's a lot harder to get service it's a lot harder to get parts right they're kind of been notoriously known for some issues so that's another aspect of McLaren that's kind of you have to kind of swallow that bullet a little bit and say you know like is this is this a car that i really want to drive or really want to drive a lot and put a lot of miles on because those kind of aspects are hard especially when you don't have any warranty you got to really dig deep into your pockets to maintain and keep these cars so you know a lot of people are arguing well if you're rich you can afford it but you got to remember a lot of people that can buy these cars you don't necessarily have to be rich i always tell people you don't necessarily have to be a millionaire to buy mclarens and porsches and ferraris People have been telling me how to make a video about how to finance exotic cars or supercars. So I think the next video I'm going to make is talking about how you can finance these cars for a lot less and a lot easier than you think from not only a down payment standpoint, but a monthly standpoint, monthly payment standpoint, and also just in general around interest rates and how you can acquire these cars through different type of banking and financing options, right? That are outside the normal credit unions and big banks like a Chase, right? So. There's other ways that you can get cars like this. So I think I might make a video on, on that aspect of how you can actually acquire a car like this. But back to the McLaren, right? This thing is small inside. So I'm six feet, my legs are crunched up. Uh, the way the, the uh, cabin and the tub is uh, designed, everything kind of angles in. So it's a, it's a very interesting uh, design. Everything is very tight. So this is just something to be aware of. If you've never been in a McLaren or you're buying one sight unseen, you never sat in one, you're a bigger person, right? I'm six feet, about 190. So like everything is perfect right now in terms of tightness. But you know, if I'm a little bit bigger, you know, my legs are long. So right now it's a little uncomfortable for me, but if I'm a little bigger, you know, I, I want to be careful about, you know, what car, like if you're buying this car to be careful with it, right? In terms of make sure you can live with it depending on how much you're going to drive it but you know some people are tall six three six four six five that live with these cars just no problem it's all personal preference but i figured it's something that i would call out but the 3.8 liter with this exhaust and tune just really sings it really opens up these cars tremendously especially because they're being these cars are turbo twin turbo so it really opens up that exhaust a lot so <laughs> Wow, I just saw a beautiful, 
997 Cobalt Blue GT3, a car that you never see. Wow, beautiful car that just drove by. So you put the dash to race mode now, it's full manual, so it's cool because it changes the whole display, it shows you tire pressures and whatnot. So it's very, it's very cool in that regard. Thanks for watching, getting back to the warehouse.